Mayara is an interesting child from Libya who is actually referred to the Hospital Necker in Paris, which is their big pediatric hospital for France, for a referral for what we call a melanonic lesion of the skull. Actually a quite large one, the one probably the largest ever reported. It left her with a large hole in her skull through which her brain was expanding outward as it grew. Uh, and it also left her with very fragile coverage of her scalp. So uh, a very tenuous position, uh, certainly for a 15-month-old, but really for anyone. So this is the uh, model that we've actually constructed from the uh, CAT scans from the child. So you can see the face here, the mandible. So we're turning now to the right occipital area. This um, colored area represents the area of the brain that's actually herniated out through the defect. And the plan's gonna to be to remove all of the skin and nevus around this lesion. And then Dr. Garpine will be taking the flap off of the back, uh, which is vascularized and we use for the reconstruction. Just so you can get a better appreciation without the lesion, again, you can see the facial orientation and then the side orientation and this actually is where the bone just didn't develop because the brain is actually physically herniated out through the hole. Dr. Goodrich and I do a lot of children each year who have craniofacial disorders. In her case, uh, it was such a unique problem that we also needed to get the expertise of Dr. Garfine. Dr. Garfine specializes in what's called microsurgery. And what microsurgery is, is a technique for taking tissue from one area of the body moving it to another area of the body and then connecting the blood vessels under the microscope. So very, very small arteries and veins under the microscope reattaching those. So in removing her nevus, she was going to be missing scalp, she was going to be missing bone, and at that point she had exposed brain. Where Dr. Garfine brings expertise is he was able to take a muscle and skin from the back and then be able to put that onto the skull. And the only way to do that, to take that much tissue successfully, is to have the ability to reattach it uh, to an artery in the veins. The harvesting of tissue in a two-year-old doing this is extremely rare and technically quite difficult. I mean, it's a challenge for the plastic surgeons uh, to get enough tissue and maintain its vascularity and maintain its viability. And that's really the key. And that was the first portion of the case. Then Dr. Goodrich came in and did his part, which was uh, technically incredibly demanding and, and uh, very, very high stakes. My job was basically to get the lesion off because the child had a large bony defect like so, where the bone never formed over the top of it. And the lesion was all melanotic all the way down uh, to the brain itself. In her case, the um, mole was actually, or the nevus, was involving the structure of the brain, so Dr. Goodrich really had to be very careful in terms of um, being able to peel that off and take that off successfully. She's back to acting like a normal kid. Uh, from the point of view of the flap, everything seems to be healing. Dr. Garfine's quite pleased with how well that's doing. Now that she's done well from that, we can go back and do some less invasive and more minor procedures, which would include um, using more scalp with hair, so we were going to we plan to put some balloons beneath the scalp that we can expand. That would give us more scalp with hair, and then begin to cover that with uh, more normal-looking hair. And then the other is to take bone, native bone, and be able to reconstruct the bone as well. But really, this to have this first reconstructive, this was the first major obstacle. Now that we've achieved that and she's done well we can go on to those next stages. The techniques that actually took place in the surgery are all techniques that we routinely do. The secret of the surgery was combining them together. In other words, I could certainly get the flap and the nevus off, but then I'm left with an exposed brain. So that's when you bring in your collaborators. Montefiore is now recognized as a place where patients with the most complicated problems can turn for treatment. And that's largely a credit to people like Jim Goodrich and Oren Tepper who are here uh, and who are recognized around the world uh, by their peers as uh, experts in their, in their areas of specialties. I thought a lot about my R's case over the past few weeks and the feeling that comes up most often is how lucky we are to have the privilege of intersecting with someone's life. Now my R won't remember us, but her parents will. Thank you.